Thanks very much for allowing us to be here with you all this morning. It's great to be here with my colleagues. And Energy and Commerce is the best committee in the House of Representatives. It's the oldest committee. And I like to say this about our committee, that we're looking over the horizon five to 10 years. And so when we're doing legislation, when the regulations then come out and follow that, it's important that we do the right thing. Because we have to make sure that we're not looking in the rearview mirror or looking at the end of the car as we go down the road. We have to be all, we have to look way out there. And I know that uh, in the last uh, several years, <clears throat> working on different matters in the committee, especially with Internet of Things, where uh, Peter Welch from Vermont and I worked together a couple of conferences ago on a working group. One of the things that we had in the six meetings that we had across uh, really the spectrum that we work on in the committee is this, is that when we have people come in and talk to us and, and sit down across the table, from, I don't care what industry they were from or what part of the country they, were, they, they, they represented, they all said the exact same thing to us. Give us soft touch regulations that we can live with, that we can go out and work with. They're not against regulations. But they want to make sure that they got regulations out there that they don't have a table full of things given to them by regulators that don't even pertain to what they do. So that's what's really important for us. And, you know, as I was also mentioned uh, by uh, Jim a little bit earlier about the committee, you know, you look back with Greg and Fred in the last uh, Congresses, you know, 93% of the bills that came out of our committee were bipartisan. 93%, I think Greg said that 94% of the bills that passed on the floor in the last Congress were bipartisan that came out. So it's important for us to do the work of the people. It's important for us to get out there and get this thing done. But at the same time, you know, as we work in our different respective committees, we have to look down that road. But we have got some things done bipartisan in this Congress. And uh, the, the most important right off the bat was robocalls. You know, when you think about 48 and a half billion robocalls being made Last year in the country, probably about $60 billion if we can get something done this year, but we got that done. I had legislation included to make it easy for people to make sure that they could get into these so you don't get Because, you know, people always say to me, hey, I thought I signed up for the Do Not Call Registry. Yeah, I did. So did I. But these are coming in from foreign countries that, that we got to stop this. Mm -hmm. So working with the FCC and the FCC working with the carriers to make sure from call authentication going right down the line, we have to make sure that we're getting things done for the American people because people are afraid to pick up their phones. And when you have uh, you know, uh, seniors out there being scammed about $38 billion a year, and of that $38 billion, a lot of it's done over the phone from these robocalls. So that's one piece of legislation that you know, I can see what we may want to really work on and get something done on. The other is, especially for us in our districts and across the country, is mapping. We have to make sure we have the broadband services out there for people so they can get out there and make sure, if, I don't care if you're in farming or uh, in financial or health, we want to make sure our kids going to school that they can use their laptops, that they can go out and have uh, the use of broadband that 95% of the country does have. We want to make sure that they have that. So, you know, uh, we, we got that bill out. We want to make sure that crosses the finish line uh, over in the Senate. And the other issue is on rip and replace of issues you know, with the equipment that's been put in by Huawei that uh, we were saying, well, wait a minute, should we trust that? Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we, there's a billion dollars out there, but we want to make sure that that gets done, so we're working with our friends over in the Senate on that. So we've got a lot of things to do. This week in committee, you know, we're going to be looking at a lot of things from 988 to, to making sure that uh, there's resiliency in the, uh, in the marketplace out there, especially when you think about the, with the disasters that have happened in California, that they can get back up making sure that people can keep their phone numbers afterwards. There's a lot of things that we touch on, but it is, we have a broad jurisdiction out there. But for me, making sure that broadband is available to people out in our rural areas is a top priority. We want to make sure that they can get things done. And the other thing, we want to win that race to 5G. If we don't do that, we don't want the Chinese to be the ones that are someplace else in the world do it, leading that. We want to do it right here in America. And at the same time, we also want to look at the other areas, making sure from cybersecurity. And, and, and I, when I go across my district and I talk, I've done probably about 1,100 meetings in the district in the last seven plus years. And when somebody tells me, oh, our cyber is fine, we got everything under control, I'm probably thinking to myself, they've already been hacked. Because once you get too uh, complacent on that, that's what happens out there. So we want to make sure on cyber, we also want to make sure on grid security and the resiliency out there on that's there. 
So when I look down the road, uh, just on our end, what we're working on in our subcommittee, we have a lot of work we should be doing. we got to get this done and uh, get it done for the American people. But I want to thank you all for allowing us to be here with you all this morning. And as uh, was now said a little earlier, I accepted a meeting earlier in the, uh, in the year. I have to be leaving in a little while to get over there. But thanks very much for allowing us to be here. And again, we do represent the best we do in Congress. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, great to be here and uh, appreciate Jim and the Rip on Society and all that you do around a whole host of issues. Uh, I agree, this is the powerful House and Energy and Commerce Committee. And as I think about our future, as I think about our future as a country, as, a, as a, this uh, whole issue around global dominance is at stake. Uh, the issues in front of the House Energy and Commerce Committee are really the ones that are going to define our future. Energy, healthcare, technology, and whether or not we beat China, and whether or not we continue to lead in the world. So uh, I'm really proud and excited to lead the House uh, Consumer Protection and Commerce Subcommittee. Janice Sierkowski is the chair of this uh, subcommittee. But as I have worked on this subcommittee, my goal has been to advance a, a pro-free market, pro-consumer, pro-innovation agenda. And I don't believe that you have to sacrifice one or the other. That's been the American way. That's been our history. Uh, one of promoting American ingenuity and innovation to solve problems. And so we've been working on privacy legislation, on driverless uh, cars, uh, establishing the legal framework for driverless cars, uh, AI. Um, I just had an opportunity to talk to Bill Gates for uh, a little bit about AI, and he assured me we're still continuing to lead. But it is so important, as you think about our future, that America is leading. Uh, so... Um, Privacy, the chairman of the full subcommittee, Frank Pallone, has said he wants a privacy bill. I have been working very closely with Jan Schurkowski. My goal has been to advance a bipartisan uh, uh, bill, legislation that we could move forward and get passed and signed into law, establishing that national framework for privacy. And uh, from the beginning of 2019, uh, we've been we've been working on this. Jan has also told me many times that she wants to have a bipartisan bill and. And right now we're the only one, we're kind of the only game in town, um, but you, I, there's a lot at stake here. You think about a patchwork of laws at the state level and what that will mean to consumers, to businesses, the confusion and uh, just the, the chaos that would result of that. But also it's important that we get it right. Uh, GDPR has, has imposed major costs, uh, barriers to entry. And America is a country that cherishes innovation and the startups. And so anything that we do, we have to make sure that we are not putting up those barriers to entry such that the startups uh, cannot uh, come into the marketplace. So uh, privacy, uh, AI, you know, there's huge potential to solve problems. But again, we need to be doing it with leading with American principles. And I really appreciate the way that the administration is approaching AI and laying out principles around American values. Uh, as I think about energy and commerce and, and moving forward and uh, what the, the vision is for the committee, you know, you just, there's such a contrast right now in visions. And on the left, you see the, the Medicare for all, the Green New Deal. It's really, it's a, a socialist agenda. And, and this is the time that we need to be leading with free market, uh, innovative solutions that win hearts and minds and that are going to make sure that America continues to lead. So uh, heading into 2020, there is, there's a lot at stake. And this committee has the issues that are going to define our future, define whether or not America is leading, winning the future. And so uh, we need to make sure that we're also winning the majority <laughs> for the Republicans so that it is the Republicans and a, and a belief in free markets and innovation that is uh, casting that vision for the future. And look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Well, thank you, and, and, and Jim, thank you for your recitation of the accomplishments of the committee. I think that's important that we do bear in mind what we have done, and those things which you mentioned are 
Yes, they're bipartisan, but they were Republican-led. And I think the best work that our committee has done, and I do agree, I do agree with Bob and Kathy that we are the best committee. We have the broadest jurisdiction, and we tend to be bipartisan. Now, just a, a quick show of hands. I don't do a lot of polling, but uh, how many people in this room think health care is a Republican issue? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, so look, it seems like forever ago, but the Iowa caucuses, the number one issue that emerged... We still don't know who won, but both sides, <laughs> the emerging issue was health care was, was way up there as uh, something that people had people's concern, people's attention. You know, you stop and think about Republicans should be involved in health care policy. Think about the differences between the two parties. Who values the sanctity of the individual? Who cherishes the supremacy of the state? Well, clearly, it's the Republican side my opinion, will deliver more cures, more opportunities, more, more choices for people. On the Democratic side, it's a winnowing down of your choices. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, from somebody who practiced medicine, you don't want less choices, you want more. So, uh, man, it's tough sledding right now in the committee, we in the health subcommittee. But at the same time, there are a few things that uh, have gotten accomplished. Uh, some increases in drugs going through the generic space, the purple book, the orange book creates that got tacked onto the last budget bill. So these are wins. And the president talks about, for the first time, his administration has seen overseen a, a, a reduction, however small, in, in pharmaceutical prices. That's a good thing, probably as a result of Dr. Scott Gottlieb pushing, pushing the generics uh, through the, the FDA as he he did when he was the administrator there. And I think we've got a good administrator, good Texan as an administrator of the FDA. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with him in the, in the future. But the, uh, these are Republican ideas, and, and they should be Republican-led. Now, some of, the, some of the great work, and, and one of the things left off was Bob Latta's track and trace bill. We're all worried about the, how, the integrity of the supply chain right now, and Bob kind of gave us the roadmap to follow with that back in 2012. And, of course, Fred Upton's crowning achievement on the, on the Cures Bill. As we go into the next version of the Cures Bill, which I believe we will, look, we had a dreadful, dreadful markup a little less than six months ago on a bill called H.R. 3, which was to control pharmaceutical prices. They said they wanted negotiation, but it was actually a hostage-taking and a 95% excise tax on the profit, I mean, on the net revenues or the gross revenues of pharmaceutical companies would actually eliminate them as, as American businesses. Well, we can't do that. And now six months later, what are we doing? We're looking at the coronavirus and we're looking at those same companies. Can you get us an antiviral a little quicker? And it does seem like there's some on the horizon and this would be great news. Can you get us a vaccine a little quicker? And it looks like there may be some on the horizon. Again, great news. What about those monoclonal antibodies that people talk about? Well, they're not going to come from somewhere else. They're going to come from research and development in pharmaceutical companies. You look back on the American history there. Yeah, Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, and he's got the statue that the bullfighters put up for him in Spain. But it was American, it was American production of penicillin that actually helped win the Second World War. It democratized penicillin of Percy Julian, African-American, we're in African-American History Month, that democratized the production of cortisone and made it a standard in, in one, of our, one of our standard medical therapies. Look, I think there's a lot to be said for the future. Uh, some of the more narrow bills went through. We did the first standalone sickle cell bill that I could ever remember. President Trump signed it law in, in 2018. The first standalone maternal mortality bill, Jamie Herrera Butler's bill, signed into law of the last Congress. We can build on those successes, and, and indeed we should. One of the things I like about Health Subcommittee is you get to color outside the lines sometimes. So uh, I actually did an event up in, or with Bob up in his district and heard from his medical staff section in one of his hospitals that, hey, these new electronic health records that you're requiring us to buy, they're hard to use, and the vendors are not being honest. And that led to an entire title in the Cures Bill to deal with interoperability and electronic health records and elimination of data blocking. So do we intersect with the uh, information technology side of the world? Of course we do. One of the things that really excites me, and, and Representative Lawrence Rogers mentioned about artificial intelligence, there's an intersection with healthcare and artificial intelligence. 
diseases like type 1 diabetes lend themselves to artificial intelligence may be the platform of the future for the correct management of type 1 diabetes. There was an article in one of the journals just the other day about the management of depression. As someone who practiced medicine, when I got out of residency, it was a long time ago, we didn't have the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, we had tricyclics. Before that, you had major tranquilizers. There has been an evolution in the treatment of depression, but still, it's empiric. You diagnose someone with impression, uh, de de depression, <laughs> impression. You diagnose someone with depression, you make a selection based upon your your training and experience, and you're going to be right about 30% of the time. The problem is, it takes six weeks before you can see a therapeutic effect, and if you guessed wrong, then you've delayed actual definitive tra treatment by six weeks. If there were a way to bring artificial intelligence into that platform to increase that to 60%, that would be pretty powerful. It would reduce the time that people actually are afflicted with the ailment that actually has a treatment available to them. Look, the future is so bright as far as, uh, in my opinion, as far as, uh, as healthcare is concerned. It has been tough sledding in the committee right now, in the subcommittee. I think the good news is the president has kind of put forward a plan through a series of executive orders, which I hated when President Obama was in office, but I can see an upside <laughs> to the executive order now. Uh, and things like transparency, <laughs> expansion of health savings accounts, flexible spending accounts, all of these are good things to put more power in the hands of people. And after all, it's people that consume health care, not the government. It's people who benefit from health care, not the government. Bright future ahead for us. We've got a lot of work to do. The good news is our committee in the majority is going to be in charge. Uh, <laughs> really, there should be no question about it. We will be in the majority next, next term. I think the president's going to be reelected. I see bright days ahead. I see us accomplishing a significant amount in the uh, in the next Congress. Can't wait to get started. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you all. Uh, I think we have some time for questions. Ralph. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, the road back to the majority, a lot of people would argue, is going to we're going to, have to do well in suburban districts, college-educated women, young voters. And one of the issues that I think a lot of those uh, constituencies care about is climate. I think uh, Leader McCarthy has come out with a lot of kind of forward-leaning, technologically innovative ideas on uh, uh, on energy. Curious how involved you are in those areas, and do you do you also agree that that's something where Republicans <coughs> kind of need to take on in an aggressive way and be have more positive alternatives? Uh, yeah, we'll go backwards. I, well, I don't think there's any question about that, and I, I do appreciate uh, Leader McCarthy's leadership on this, and I think the uh, the roadmap that he's proposed is one that the committee needs to take very seriously. I also think you're right about uh, the part of the electorate where we have to do well, and the suburban mom. Uh, it wasn't any secret in the 2018 election. That was one of the weaknesses. As someone whose entire healthcare career was built around delivering healthcare to women, I understand that women are the ones who make the majority of the healthcare decisions in their families. And as a consequence, we need to speak to them on climate, on healthcare, on, on all of the issues that touch in the Energy and Commerce Committee. Yes, I, I largely agree. When you think about the issues in front of the Energy and Commerce Committee, whether it's climate, energy, healthcare, technology, these are the, the issues that are defining our future. These are the issues that are defining politics right now. And we need to be presenting all of these issues in a way that are going, it's going to win hearts and minds uh, to American leadership and, and, I would argue, Republican solutions. So around climate, I, too, uh, I applaud what Kevin McCarthy has put together. Uh, you know, America has led in energy. We have been, it has been a big part of our economic uh, leadership, uh, our economic competitiveness, and it's going to continue to be. And the clean energy future, that is really where we're headed and where the world is headed, uh, again, it's American ingenuity and technology that's leading. I think it's very interesting to note, and Garrett Graves has been heading up our, uh, been the ranking member on the Climate Task Force. Waxman Markey that was passed in 2009 in the House, failed to pass the Senate, the projections as to bringing down carbon emissions 
and the cost, we have exceeded it. In 10 years, we've exceeded, we brought down our carbon emissions more than what Max, Waxman Markey had projected they would be able to do through cap and trade. We've done it more and we've done it at a lower cost through technology and innovation and uh, American ingenuity. And I come from a district, uh, I talk a lot, I promote hydropower. We could double hydropower in America. It's the largest renewable without building a new dam. Only 3% of the dams produce electricity. You think about what's going on on our forest. One third, 30%, you know, of the, the between 30 and 35% of our national forests are bug infested, disease dying timber. I love the, the trillion tree agenda. You know, I, I just think there's a way that we can absolutely talk about these issues and uh, clean energy future, uh, CLT, cross laminated timber. You do, but you go across the board. What's going on? We, nuclear has to be a part of our, uh, our future. And uh, the solutions there, the, the, the new technology. So I, uh, there's, a, there's actually a kid, I'm meeting with him later on today, Benji Becker, out of University of Washington that is organizing on college campuses around a conservative conservation um, uh, uh, association. And he's organizing chapters. And we need more of that. We need to be encouraging that because Republicans absolutely have to be talking about this issue as well as many others. Well, again, with my colleagues, it's great to be with them. And because, again, if you look what we've done on energy and commerce, we, we've really led the way. When you look at the, as Kathy mentioned, when you look at CO2 emissions across the globe, the United States has led. When you take the EU, the United States, and you look at China, we're way below what, what they are. And so, you know, we're, we're reducing these numbers. And I think that... Uh, what Greg had mentioned uh, you know, a year or so back was, you know, we're out there thinking about adaptation, conservation, innovation, preparation, make sure we get these things done. And so it's getting the, the legislation across the line. But uh, it, again, I, you have to look what we've been doing and what we've done in our committee. And I, we have led. And our problem is, if you listen to the other side, you know, everything's always going the wrong way, but they need to look at the numbers. And if they want to talk about true science, look what we have done. And so, you know, when we're promoting uh, on the nuclear side, you want, uh, you know, zero CO2, there's, there's one right there. But we've got to lead, and we have to tell people that. But again, unfortunately, the other side, and a lot of issues that we, we work with, they always get out there and they say, oh, Republicans aren't doing anything. And then the drumbeat of the national media picks that up all the time. But we need to, we need to explain what we've done, especially how we've led in ENC. Thank you.